So in-group, out-group identity. So sometimes you present something to a group and you want to convince them of some idea, and half the group is like, yeah, hell yeah, I totally agree with you, and the other half of the group comes at you with pitchforks and torches, and you're like, well, what the heck, I use the same techniques, why is this, you know, that kind of a thing going on? Well, it's the in-group, out-group bias. So what ends up happening is you tend to listen to people in your in-group, and then when people from the outside, from the out-group, come at you with something, immediately your guard is up because there's a threat to your personal identity. You know, so when someone challenges you, a, a tightly held belief that you have, and they're from the out-group, immediately you're going to deny everything they're saying. Even if they have facts that prove you wrong, you're still going to deny that, and it's actual phenomenon. And so you're not going to end up getting the same kind of results with persuasion techniques when you are you know, trying to address the out-group. And so this is especially important when you talk about you know, authority. So if someone with authority comes with facts, normally, you would tend to listen to those people. That's one of the tendencies of persuasion. But if you're in the out-group, those people will let, believe you even less. They're going to go even further in the other direction. And this is an actual phenomenon that we see. This is called cognitive dissonance. So it's this feeling like when we feel like we're being threatened by someone from the outside, the first thing we do is we try to resolve that. So we try to think of ways to prove them wrong. We try to rationalize ways that we're right. We ignore things. We deny them. We do all kinds of crazy things to resolve this dissonance. And so there's this thing called the backfire effect. And this is um, a group of medical doctors who are trying to convince the public that vaccines do not cause autism. And for the record, they do not. Okay. There was one study that showed this, and it was actually proven it was retracted because the scientists actually made up the data, and it was pulled. But by that time, so many people are on board with thinking that vaccines caused autism. You know, there's this whole Jenny McCarthy movement, you know, all hell broke loose. And so now, scientists are trying to go back and say, oh, hey, this isn't actually the case, you know, this is not what's going on. But these people have already ingrained in their, their, the core of their identity that this is what's going on, this is what caused my kids autism, that when presented by facts, by authority figures in science, they are actually more likely to hold on to their beliefs than they were before they were given this evidence. And so people are kind of up in arms, like, well, if you can't give people facts in order to get them to know the truth, what are you going to do? And so an example of this is also you know, global warming or the climate issue right now. So I'm going to bring up all the challenging and controversial topics. <laughs> so basically, global warming and climate change is kind of divided right now between political parties. You have the Democrats and the liberals that are kind of on the side of science, and they're saying, look, you know, climate change is a real thing. It's happening. We need to do something about it. And then the conservatives are like, well, you know, we don't believe it. You know, the data is not real. You know, so they're denying it. And so what's happening. The liberals are coming at the conservatives with more and more and more data, trying to show them, you know, that this is true. And it's, it's working less and less and less. And so it's only getting worse. So how do you resolve this kind of thing? Well, one thing, you have to find someone that's on the in-group as an ally and give them 